pussy's not your mama's drilling, amen? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is not old-fashioned pop jack oil drilling a few hundred feet straight down into the ground. Most of uh, that oil has already been extracted. So now I'm going to show you the drill map of Murphy and Jefferson uh, because what we're talking about is directional drilling using thousands of pounds of toxic chemicals at incredible high pressure under our homes. And just not too far from this site, we visit St. John's where we have a lot of our elderly. We have partnerships in this community with uh, Mid City Prep, who is not too far from here. So, so, uh, so this side drilling could reach real far areas in our immediate community. You see here uh, a map of where they've been drilling the past few years, and yes, these are well pads all coming from the mother sites of Murphy and the site at Jefferson and Budno. This is what we are dealing with. This is what we are facing in our community. And we uh, have uh, invited some uh, uh, community members to come uh, and just uh, share with you some of their experiences. And as I said earlier on, uh, we're dealing with known facts. Okay, uh, because that's very, very important uh, because we do not have time for speculation. Uh, if we're going to speculate, it's going to be based on facts uh, around it. But, but, but children, families, uh, our elderly uh, are experiencing a lot of challenges at the current moment. Uh, and so uh, we're going to uh, invite uh, those who will be sharing some testimony to come up at this time. We're going to invite uh, Donald Martin, who is a West Adams community resident, if you would come up at this time. Uh, Manuel Sanchez is a gardener at the Clark Library on Adams and Cimarron. Uh, if, he should, if he could come up. Uh, Donna Ann Ward is a West Adams community resident, resident uh, who called AQMD. Uh, and then we also have one of our uh, firefighters here uh, to uh, share. Uh, also, so if they could come up at this time uh, so that we can hear uh, from individuals, our neighbors who are in this community. So please have a seat uh, and then uh, we'll proceed. On December the 2nd, 2013, Freeport, Metamoran Oil and Gas began construction on three wells at the Murphy Drill site. Our neighbors tell us. It goes on 24 hours a day. Our neighbors tell us it goes on seven days a week. And so, uh, at this time, we're gonna ask Donald uh, if he would uh, share a brief testimony about uh, what uh, he and some of his neighbors have been experiencing. Donald? Thank you, Pastor. To so, all the relatives, friends, family, and let's consider all of us as being family because essentially that's where we are. My name is Donald Martin. I graduated from the University of California in Santa Cruz with a degree in political science. I attended Hastings Law School where I graduated with a Jewish doctorate degree. I also served as a city attorney for the city of Freeport, Louisiana. During my course of work there, I experienced writing zoning laws, fire laws, hazmat ordinances, and was in charge of overall code enforcement for that area, which included the drilling and operation of wells within the city limits. I now live within 100 yards of the well at 2126 Adams, right down the street. What concerns me are a lot of things about that well. First of all, there's only a parking lot that separates my particular apartment from that well. At any given time, there are 
30, 40, 50 cars in that particular lot. Today, on my way here, there were several fire trucks that were parked outside that well, which brought about an immediate concern to me because I am aware that there are vapors and other things that are escaping from that well. And what I fear most, or perhaps most, is an explosion at that well. Because if there's an explosion, there's no buildings, no walls, no anything to protect us against the percussion from that explosion. Essentially, my apartment would be splintered and all the people in there are in jeopardy. And then secondarily, with that many cars being parked in that lot, if there's a fire and those cars catch on fire, each one of them is a potential explosive device, which means that you could have a series of 50 different explosions preventing people from leaving that facility. Um, also, I mean, I can sit here and I can tell you that I hear those wells going 24-7. Yes, yes, yes. They come through my window 24-7. And sometimes you kind of get lost in the fact that they're there because either the television is going, the phone is ringing, or something. So subconsciously you kind of forget about it. But then occasionally, you hear these drills going through this rock. And as my neighbor, Miss Amy Aguilar, experienced, Miss Aguilar, are you there? Right here. Okay, please stand so they can recognize As Miss Aguilar often experiences, she can't sleep at night because of those wells. They're drilling, they're drilling, they're drilling. And then occasionally, you can hear the clangor of pipes. You hear those pipes hitting against each other as they try and extend the drill bit. We're often interrupted by trucks all times of night, large trucks. I don't mean just the regular pickup trucks. I mean trucks that are transporting God knows what. They come in and out at all times of day or night, and their sound is not protected. Also, they have traffic jams. In order to get those trucks in and out of there, they've got to stop traffic along Adams Boulevard, which is an inconvenience not only to the neighbors, but also a danger to us as well. I can tell you that during the drilling process, you can feel your house shake. You can feel the ground shake underneath your feet. You can often smell odors of sulfur and see ash, as Mr. and Mrs. Perez experienced. Would you please stand here? Thank you, Temple Valley. They can see what's going on. Why well, they blocked everything off around us so that we can't see certain things they've left open. You know, and out of all of that, I hear this all night, I smell this all night, but this really isn't about me. And I want to take just a few moments to speak for the 47% that are unrepresented. You know, I say that tongue in cheek because I know in our last election, President Obama was 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 in that election and Mitt Romney made a comment regarding 47 percent and he got in trouble he wished he hadn't publicized that statement regarding the 47 percent but that's not the 40 percent percent that I'm talking about this 47 percent does not belong to any particular political constituency it does not belong to any particular religion it's not a part of any particular ethnicity. It's not a part of any particular culture or even any particular national origin. However, it is the most valuable resource we have. And I'd like for you to take around, take, just take a moment and glance around you and see 
what segment of this population is most conspicuously missing? Our children. Thank you. Our children. So I just want to take a minute or two to make you aware of what's happening with our children. I have a granddaughter who's now 11 years old. We moved into St. Andrew's Gardens approximately four years ago. At the time, she was seven. Typically, she would go to bed at night. And this has been exacerbated in the last few months. The fumes from that well would come into our residence. And that's particularly significant because when those fumes seep into your residence, they become concentrated. They don't dissipate as they would normally in the air. So if she would go to bed at 9, typically, she would wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, typically. That means that typically, she will sleep for 8 to 10 hours, totally oblivious to those fumes. Then when she would get up in the morning, first thing she'd do is take a shower and she'd go to eat. Well, we don't have any knowledge as to whether or not those fumes saturated our food products. If, in fact, they attached to some of the chemicals in the food product, then typically she would ingest those directly into her system. Now, we don't know, we don't have any information to determine whether or not her body can actually digest those chemicals. If she can digest those chemicals, then they are absorbed directly into her bloodstream. Then she leaves for school. She's a student at 24th Street Elementary School. Once again, she's placed into a classroom. The fumes from those wells go into those classrooms, and again, they become concentrated. Not only that, but if you superimpose the fumes from the freeway, which is directly adjacent to that school, then all of a sudden you complicate the thing. And you ask why am I bringing all this up? Because I can call five schools on this particular street that are less than four to five hundred yards from that well. That doesn't include the schools that are down underneath this hill where if the wind changes direction, they become affected too. Then, after spending all that time in class, she comes outside to play. When she comes outside to play, she's, 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 she's bleeding. I'm sorry, I, I just, I gotta say this. I know I'm running over time. But I brought all this to a point. The point is that my granddaughter became sick. We had to go get her from school one day because she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a cancer, a cancer that affected her entire body. All her lymph nodes were infected. We had to take her to get treatment, chemotherapy. And when they cut the knot out of her, they put an instrument, a device inside her called a portal where they can inject dangerous chemicals directly into her system. Okay. I've said all of that to say this, and then I'm going to cut it short. The importance of that is that every one of your children, every one of your children, experience the same thing. When they breathe in these chemicals, when they sit at that school, when they even play, they're breathing in those toxic chemicals. Now, I can't link that directly to that oil well. I wish I could. I can't say that they can't live with, you know, with this well, 
but I can say they can live without it. So thank you for your time, and I'm sorry. For time. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Martin. And so we've heard of constant noises, tremors, uh, and raining ashes on people's homes. Uh, we had a video prepared for you around some of the other uh, uh, challenges around the drilling, uh, causing cracks at the uh, Clark Library. Uh, Mr. Manuel Sanchez provided for us, but I'm gonna, uh, for the sake of time, skip that because uh, I think, you know, uh, we all know what cracks is all about and we'll show you uh, before we uh, leave uh, today. Uh, in addition to uh, impacts on residents and surrounding institutions, uh, we also wondered about the operations of uh, Freeport uh, McMoran Oil and Gas. The South Coast Air Quality Management District, AQMD, recently verified that the community has been experiencing the uh, what the community is experiencing uh, is the drilling causing the release of gases uh, far in excess of what is allowed by law, and those unlawful emissions are impacting, uh, as you just heard, the health of our children and indeed all of our health. Uh, and so uh, we want to ask Donna uh, uh, and Ward to uh, 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 give a, a brief testimony around uh, these AQMDs. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Donna Ann Ward. I'm a homeowner on uh, West 31st Street, the 2100 block. I am exactly seven blocks south of the well. I see the tower when I stand in my backyard. I would like to thank our fire department, our police department, our elected officials, the mayor's office, the city attorney's office, council president Wesson for coming today. I know everyone is very busy um, running this city and keeping us safe. I'd like to thank my neighbors for showing up. Um, Tuesday morning, uh, a couple days ago, took my dogs out in the backyard, five minutes to eight in the morning, and I smelled something sweet and gassy. And as we have gone through this process of trying to dialogue with Freeport McMoran and find out what's going on with these wells, we have been told if we smell any unusual odor, something that smells like rotten eggs, something that smells like gas from our stove, something that smells sweet or gassy, call the proper agency, 1-800-CUT-SMART. I called AQMD, I got a live person, I said I'm standing in my backyard, I smell something sweet and gassy. Four hours later, the investigator uh, Fujiwara walked onto the site and said nothing was up, everything was running fine, but because I had called in an odor alert, he tested the air. He reported back to me that there were 20,000 parts per million natural gas, unodorized, flowing from a leak in the well. I'm not a scientist. I said, I don't know what that means. What's the allowable limit? He said, 500. I said, that's 40 times the allowable limit. I'm looking at this well. He said, yes, ma'am, that is a lot. I said, I said thank you very much. For clarifying that. And I said, what is, I, I'm not a scientist. I'm a person who owns a house and two dogs. What is the risk? And he said, the risk is, it's on the low end. He said, but it's explosion. And so I went up there. I went to Adams Boulevard and I looked around. And I looked at the AIDS hospice care facility that shares a hard border with the well. I looked at St. Andrew's Garden that shares a hard border with the well. Western Convalescent, which is on the other side of the AIDS care facility. Diagonal to it, Exceptional Children's Foundation. It houses adults and children with permanent physical, emotional, intellectual disabilities. St. John of God, Hospice Care, Independent Square, Retirement. And I thought, how would we evacuate these blocks if something happened? So I went to the fire department. I went to 26th Street. Goodbye, guys. You are so cute. You're so cute in your uniform. <laughs> Santa's going to bring you a dog. And I said to the captain, do you know what's going on at this well? And he said, no. We said, I said, look, I'm just a layman, but what we understand is starting January 30th, 30,000 pounds of acid will be put in these wells. 
He said, well, our concern is that these trucks are going to be on residential roads. He said, we would like to know about that. He said, we would like to know if they're storing them on the facility. We'd like an emergency response plan. I, think, I said, what would have happened if someone had called in 20,000 parts per million natural gas leaking? He said, well, we would have responded as if it were a hazmat spill. I said, what does that mean? He said, well, it depends on what we saw when we got there. The ball was in the air. No one had any plan. So I went to 34th Street Station. I got the exact same response. Nope, nobody's contacted us. We don't have a phone number. We don't really know what's on the on site. We don't have a map of the well. Went to the police station. Thank you so much for coming, Officer Sanchez. We really appreciate it. Um, they have the exact same response. No one knows anything, and I am not a scientist. So my concern is, what's going to happen to us if something happens at the well? What's the liability for the city? They can be sued. If they do not complete an environmental impact report before the acidification of the well, like they've been asked, what's going to happen? So I just, you know, I'm just a person, I'm just somebody who went out in my yard and smelled something and called 1-800-CUT-SMOG, and AQMD was great. And they shut the well down, and they gave them a notice to comply, and the well fixed it. But no one knew it was happening. And the thing that I smelled wasn't even happening. So if I, if I hadn't called, it simply would have gone on. We don't know if they're supposed to wear monitors on site. We don't know if they're supposed to have somebody from an agency on site. We don't know anything. So, you know, as a taxpayer and as someone who loves my neighborhood, I love my home, I love being here. I voted for Garcetti and I voted for you. <laughs> no, not everyone did. It wasn't that much of a landslide. You know, we rely on you. We rely on the power that, that I rely on the power that my elected officials have to affect change. Freeport McMurray is one of the largest copper and gold producers on the planet. They have bought PXP, which is one of the largest gas and oil producers on the planet. I am one person with two dogs standing in the yard wondering what's going to happen to me. So I just wanted to share my experience and thank everyone for um, coming together and helping me. Uh, yes, um, I don't know if the firefighters are here, but um, oh yes, um, people were concerned because there were fire trucks in front of the well this morning, yes, yes. and our men in uniform went and went to the site and said we'd like to look at it. We'd like a, we'd like a physical right. way out of it. So I think they had to leave, they made it very clear that if they had a call, the, the LAPD is the same way, if they have a call they have to leave. Or is that a fireman standing next to you in the hat back there, officer? <laughs> no. Would you like okay. to be a fireman? <laughs> you could go to the well site. Okay. Thank, th thanks so much. Remember, uh, uh, you might be just one person, but uh, it is important to realize that every waterfall starts with one drop. Uh, so that's very, very important.